So today I'm going to be talking about The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. This is my first James McBride novel, but I'm telling you now, it won't be my last. In 1972, when the workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, were digging the foundations for a new well, the last thing they expected to find was a skeleton at the bottom of the well. Who the skeleton was and how it got there are the two long-held secrets kept by the residents of Chicken Hill. Chicken Hill, a dilapidated neighbourhood in which immigrant Jews and African Americans lived side by side and shared their ambitions and sorrows. So after this skeleton is discovered in the 1970s, we then jump back to the 1930s to explore this community that lived on Chicken Hill. And this is a novel primarily about community and its inhabitants, the clash of cultures. I'm pretty sure I won't be the first person to have said this, but the main theme for me in this novel is hope. It's also exploring themes of race, culture, racism, abuse, community, music. It's pretty jam-packed. Now this might sound a little bit weird, but it is also a novel about the American dream. The term American dream was coined in a best-selling book in 1931 titled Epic of America, drain Truslow Adams the belief that anyone, regardless of where they are born or what class they're born into, can attain their own version of success in a society in which upward mobility is possible for everyone. And that phrase, their own version of success, is key to this book. Especially when it comes to my favourite character in this book, the linchpin that holds this book together and that holds the community of Chicken Hill together, Chona. Chona is Jewish and she had polo when she was younger, so she now walks with a limp. So firstly, what an absolutely delicious point I have decided to freeze frame. Check out my face. And also, polo, polo, what am I talking about? She had polio when she was younger and she now walks with a limp. That is what I should have said. And she is the owner of the Heaven and Earth grocery store. She is amazing. I loved her. She is funny, she is stubborn, she is kind, and she is what brings this whole community together. This whole community that at times clashes against each other. She is the glue that almost is able to bring everyone together, and it's because of her kindness, it's because of her personality, it's because of what she stands for that everyone sort of comes together around her, or around the Heaven and Earth grocery store. Her husband Moshi, now I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong, so please let me know in the comments below how I should be sort of sounding that out, but dyslexic brain and all that jazz, that's the best I could do. That's what I kind of had in my head. But anyway, back on track. Her husband, Moshi, he runs a series of sort of theatre and music venues. And the two of them just evolve and grow to embrace change and inclusivity. Not just in her shop or just in his music venues, although his inclusivity within his music venues does make him quite a wealthy man. But yeah, but just not within their businesses, but also within the community, within themselves. I definitely felt whilst reading this that Chona's love for her community, embracing of inclusivity, is definitely more deeply rooted in her and her actions. And that Moshi just sort of like it goes along for the ride. And it's his love for her that is able to sort of like his acceptance of her, of who she is and his love for her is what enables him to open up and become a more inclusive person. So I definitely think it is coming from her. I think if it wasn't for her, he might not have found that within himself, but it is because of his love for her that yeah, he kind of grows that sort of acceptance within him. Now this novel has a lot of characters and most of those characters get backstories. This novel is jumping backwards and forwards in time constantly. It's a character driven novel with small plot threads kind of tying it all together. And all the characters on Chicken Hill have big personalities and they have fun nicknames like Bags, Fatty, Big Soap, Rusty. Now some people might be put off by how melancholically uplifting this novel is and to those people I say cheer up, it's the holiday season. As these characters stories start to overlap and the novel deepens it becomes clear how much the people on the margins of society struggle and what they must do to survive. Now the plot doesn't really kick in until we're a fair way into the book and I would say there's two main plot devices at play within this novel. The first involves a young boy called Dodo, he is deaf and he is wanted by the authorities and the whole community must come together to look out for him. And the second I've already mentioned, it is what happens at the start of the novel, the mysterious skeleton that is found at the bottom of the well. When the truth is finally revealed about what happened on Chicken Hill and the part the town's white establishment played in it, McBride shows us that even in dark times it is love and community, heaven and earth that sustains us. That's directly from the blurb, I didn't write that bit. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. I love the writing style, it flows beautifully and McBride does an absolutely fantastic job of bringing these characters to life. I love that the novel is filled with these little details and as the novel builds and builds and builds these details just get richer and richer and richer. 
I loved the clash and coming together of the black and Jewish community on Chicken Hill. And it isn't just whimsical good times on this community. They do clash. There is real bigotry, deep rooted bigotry within the people within this community. But they are just able to find at times way to push past it, ways to find that hope within each other, that they should look out for each other, that they are a community in a country that doesn't want them. I love the structure of this novel. Now, it's not unique. It's nothing we haven't seen before, but McBride just executes it effortlessly. And if you hadn't figured out already, I love the characters and overall, I just loved the message of this book. Despite this novel's dark moments, it never leans into them as if the dark moments are of really heightened importance. It's not a book that cries out, please, please give me a ward. Look how dark I am. I'm so dark. Look at all the important messages that are taking place within me. I'm so dark. It's so brutal. The world is so shit. It is not that type of book. It has a excellent balance at play, but ultimately, ultimately, it is about hope. And when I finished that final page, I felt so, so uplifted. What didn't I like? Only one thing. It's to do with the skeleton in the well. Now, I don't think this is spoilers at all. I'm not going to tell you who that skeleton was. But I found the whole thing to be really, really gimmicky. It's a device that I put in the back of my head. Oh, this is going to be important. It's not going to be who I think it's going to be. This whole novel is going to take turns and twists. And the whole way through, I'm going to be thinking, oh, could it be that person? Could it be this person? But actually what happens is you sort of forget about the skeleton because you learn that the novel isn't about the skeleton at all. It's about this community. But then also you go, oh, well, then what was the point? And I kept thinking that. I kept going, you've cheapened this novel by adding in this huge gimmick that personally, I just didn't think was needed. Also, I can guarantee you that not one single person, not one single person who reads this book will guess wrong who they think that skeleton is. In fact, it's so obvious you feel like you must be wrong and then it turns out to be exactly what you thought it was going to be. And as I said, even me having to say what I've just said, saying that makes me feel like, ugh, I don't want to be saying those things about this novel. This novel is beautiful. It's uplifting. It's hopeful. It's about a wonderful community. I learned a lot. Why am I now having to cheapen it with some stupid mystery? Who could the skeleton be? I don't know. I just, someone in the comments, please let me know. If you're like, it's really crucial because of X, Y, Z, please let me know. I am happy to be wrong. But yeah, for my reading experience, I just, it just wasn't needed. But that's it. That is the only thing I disliked about this book. Other than that, yeah, I really loved it. I was going to give this novel 4.5 stars out of 5 because I honestly do think that the whole skeleton in the well thing really does cheapen what is a fantastic book. And I did kind of go to myself at times, oh, I really, really wish that didn't exist. Why am I having to think about that whilst getting lost in this wonderful book? So I, in my heart of hearts, I'm probably, yeah, this is a 4.5 out of 5. But there's a part of me that says, why am I being a dickhead? Just give it five stars out of five. You clearly loved it. So yeah, it's a five star book. Now, I don't think this book is for everyone. As said, it hasn't got a real detailed plot. It is character driven and the plot threads that are there, uh, they're quite loose. They tie it all together and they give an excuse for everything to happen. Uh, and But that very much is what's at play. You know, those plot devices are very much just there so we can explore this community. And I think for some people, yeah, they just they won't enjoy that. They'll want something to be a little bit detailed. In fact, I find it weird that I'm saying these things because I am very plot driven as a reader. Uh, yeah, I just didn't mind with this one. I loved getting lost with these characters. So have you read The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. And I'll see you all on the next one.